Hi there, my name is MC Oda, and I have a tutorial here on how to do a really cool skin effect. So for comparison, this is the normal skin that I use when I am playing Minecraft. Now let me show you what this looks like with my new effect. And here it is. I'm calling this effect either a ghost effect or even a hologram effect. Uh, this can be used, say you're doing like a scary or a spooky or a horror based game. You can be a ghost character. Uh, maybe you just want to dress up your skin for a Halloween contest. Maybe you're doing a futuristic or sci-fi setting and you want your uh, character to be a hologram character. I think this effect uh, is uh, pretty effective. Now, I'm not sure if I'm the first person to uh, come upon this. I'm sure I'm not, but um, I did some searching on a way to do this and I didn't find anything. So I kind of came up with this myself and uh, hopefully you can find this useful. It's really not that hard to do and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. To apply this effect, we will be editing our skin. But before we do that, we have to understand how the skin file is laid out. You can see some pictures of the layout here on the Minecraft wiki. And uh, if you go to the section called skin, there is a section down here called templates. And under here, they have some pictures of the templates. This shows you examples of, a, of the skin files used in the game. This kind of breaks down the layers, but I find that these pictures down here in the other templates are a lot easier to understand, particularly this first one and this third one. So in the file, there's like all of the body parts are kind of sectioned off in these zones and you have like head and head two, and that means head layer one, kind of the inner layer, and then head layer two, that outer layer. And then you have the next section where you have these three pieces all in a row, right leg, body, and right arm. And right below that, you have the layer two versions of all the same three, right leg two, body two, and right arm two. The bottom is the similar, but it's laid out a little bit different. You have the left leg and the left arm in the center, and then you have layer two for the left leg on the left, and layer two for the left arm on the right. Do note that this first picture is the wide model or the Steve model. Um, over here, this is the slim model or the Alex model. And the only difference here is that the arms are thinner. So if you are applying to this to a skin that uses the slim model, you will have to be aware that the arms are a little bit different width and the layout here is slightly different. Like there's a gap here that you'll have to be aware of. But for this tutorial, I will be editing a wide model or a Steve skin. Now let's go ahead and get into our image editor. Uh, you can use any image editing software that you're used to, as long as it can uh, edit PNG files. In my case, I'm using a software called Photoshop Elements or Adobe Photoshop Elements. Uh, this is pretty much like a scaled down version of Photoshop that's a little bit more affordable. And uh, so far it's been able to do everything that I've needed to do. So this is my editor of choice. But if you are familiar with image editors, then you should hopefully be able to translate the instructions that I'm going to give into your editor. So the first thing we need to do is open up the PNG file of your skin. So I'm going to drag mine over here and drop it in. Now you'll see that this uh, file is very, very small and very, very hard to see. So the first thing you need to do once you have it in your editor is to zoom it in a lot. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the zoom at 1000% uh, and that makes it uh, big enough that we can see it on the screen. Now you can see my skin file laid out in the uh, kind of in the in the sections that we just saw on the wiki. We have my head up here. This is layer one, that inner layer. And this is uh, layer two, that outer layer. I do have a few 3D elements on my skin that you might have noticed in the opening of the video. And that includes the, the chin part of my beard and my little ears are sticking out. I also have 3D elements down here on my arms and legs with like clothing folds and uh, sneakers, the soles of my shoes and stuff like that. So the first thing we need to do is kind of flatten the skin. We need to uh, combine layer two with layer one so that we're gonna have all of the imagery that's in our skin. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that. I'm, I'm gonna do this section by section. So I'm gonna start with the head. And what I'm gonna do is first, I'm going to select the outer layer of the head. I'm gonna use the rectangle selecting tool. And you kind of have to be careful to make sure that you're lining up the pixels correct. So I'm gonna select the entire section that would be the layer two of the head. And once that's selected, I want to copy it. Uh, of course, I can use the menu to copy it. It's control C in my software as a keyboard shortcut. So I will copy that. And now I want to paste this on top of layer one so that we can kind of combine these layer two pixels into layer one. And like I said, kind of flatten that image a little bit. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to select the layer one version of the head. And now that that's selected, I could just paste uh, the layer two on it, but then 
in this software, that paste is that paste action is going to create another layer. Then I have to worry about flattening the layers, and I kind of don't want to deal with that with this technique. Uh, it's a little bit simpler if instead I do this paste into selection. And the keyboard shortcut on my software for that is Shift Control V. So I'm going to paste that into the selection. Now you're going to notice two things. First of all, that doesn't look bright. And second of all, it didn't make another layer, which is awesome. So I, that's what I wanted. I wanted this to all stay on one layer. But you notice that it didn't line up here. And the reason for that, I think, is just because like it doesn't have pixels. It doesn't have solid pixels in my selection that went all the way to the edge. So it kind of not, it's not sure how to line it up. But as long as I don't click on anything else yet and I still have these uh, the pasted selections highlighted, I can kind of hover over and I get my movement tool. So I can just kind of click and drag with that movement tool and drag all of those selected pieces into the correct position. So now the ears line up where the ears should be, the uh, chin part of my beard lines up where that should be on layer one. So now we've successfully flattened the head. We have flattened the two layers into a single layer of pixels. So now what we need to do is move those pixels from layer one out to layer two. And we're going to do that in much the same way that we just moved layer two over. We're going to select all of layer one and make sure that you're getting all of the correct pixels. Control C to copy that. Now I'm going to select the area that is the layer two of the head and make sure I get everything all the way to the edge because the head does go to the edge. Now I'm going to control shift V to paste that selection in again, using that same paste action where it keeps it all in one layer. So now we have effectively duplicated layer one onto layer two. So we flattened them into a single image and then we put all of those pixels onto layer two. But to make this effect look right, we need to actually get rid of layer one. And in trying to do this, I learned a few things about how the game renders the skins. If we were to just highlight and delete layer one and then try to make layer two transparent, even though you can save the file that way, when the game renders it, it will still render layer one as some kind of solid pixels. You cannot make layer one transparent. And when I tried this by just deleting everything on layer one, it actually copied, whenever it rendered it in the game, it copied the layer two pixels onto layer one and it looked really strange. So instead of deleting it, what I found to be effective is just whiting it out, making it all white. And the way I'm gonna do that in my tool is I'm gonna use that same uh, paste selection. See, right now when I have this selected, if I were to fill this, it's gonna fill in all of the pixels, not just the solid pixels. I only want the solid pixels filled in. I want these transparent pixels to remain transparent. So an easy way that I can kind of select that is I can just do the control shift V again with this layer one selected. And when I do that, even though it kind of pastes it over it, which we really didn't need it to do, what it did do is it highlighted only the solid pixels of that layer. And that's what I wanted it to do. Now, before I go to the next step, I'm going to make sure that my color palette here is set to the standard uh, black and white, which is kind of the default setting for the for the program. And I'm going to use this background color of white to fill in this layer one. And I can do that simply by right clicking and choosing fill selection. I think that option is also up here in the menu under edit. Fill selection. There is no keyboard shortcut for this in this tool. So I will fill selection and I'm going to fill it with my background color, which is the white, and I'm just gonna OK. So now effectively what we have done, we have completed the head. We have flattened layer two and layer one into a single image. We copied all those pixels out onto layer two, and then we whited out layer one. Now we just have to do that for all of the other body parts. And since this chunk here with the uh, right leg, the body and the right arm is all one single chunk, we can kind of do all of those together. So I'm going to, using the same technique, I'm going to select all of layer two. Now look, I'm only going to make the selection go to here. I'm not going to make the selection go to the end of the image because as we saw in the pictures on the wiki, this section actually did not go all the way to the end. It ended here. And again, if you're doing a slim model, uh, it's actually going to end, uh, it's even thinner right here because that right arm is a, is a smaller uh, width. So control C, copy this. Now I'm gonna select the area that comprises layer one of this chunk. Control shift V. And this time it lined up and I think that's because it actually had solid pixels that came all the way to the top, the bottom and the side. So it knew exactly how to line that up. 
you can see that it's lined up by the collar of my shirt here. Everything, it looks good. So that looks good to go. I'm just gonna deselect that. So I've now flattened the image. So now what I need to do is just copy this out to layer two. So I'm gonna select layer one, control C, and I'm gonna select the area that comprises layer two, and control shift V. All right, now I just need to white out layer one. So again, I'm going to select the area of layer one, hit control shift V so that I can effectively select all of these, sol easily select all of these solid pixels in that layer, right click, Fill the selection with the background color and white it out. And now let's do the left leg the same way. I'm going to highlight all the pixels for layer two, hit copy, highlight all the pixels of layer one, control shift V, those lined up nicely. Okay, deselect, select layer one, copy it, select the area of layer two, control shift V, We've now duplicated on layer two. So now we have to get layer one again, and you got to make sure you're getting the right pixels here. So it could be a little tricky. There we go. And control shift V. We've now effectively selected the solid pixels here, and we can fill that selection with the background color. And last but not least is the right arm. Again, if you're doing the Alex model or the slim model, you're gonna have to be careful with this because not only is it slimmer, but there's a gap in between them. So you're gonna to have to really make sure that you select these correctly. Ooh, I did not select that correctly. Let me try that again. There you go. Okay, so select layer two, copy. Select the area of layer one, control shift V. And this one did not line up. So without, before I click on anything, I'm gonna hover over here, use my movement tool to pull that into position. And that looks good, deselect. And now let's copy layer one, control C, highlight the area for layer two, control shift V. We've now duplicated it. And now we can select the area of layer one. And that goes all the way out to that pink pixel here. Okay, that looks correct. Control shift V. We've got that selected, right click, and fill this selection with the background color and that is done. The hard part is over. You've completely edited it. You have successfully flattened your entire skin into a single layer of pixels. You put those pixels out on layer two, which can be transparent, and you have whited out layer one, which cannot be transparent. And now the only thing left is to make layer two transparent. Now, like I said earlier, no matter what the file looks like, it is going to render, the game is going to render layer one as solid. So we're gonna use that to our advantage and we're not gonna to have to worry about making certain pieces of this transparent. We're just gonna make the whole file transparent. And in my tool, I'm gonna to do that up here where the layers are listed. There is this opacity setting and it's at 100% by default. I'm going to just to put this down to, I like 50%. That's what I used. I think that made an effective looking uh, skin. Uh, feel free to play around with the opacity setting. Try to find something that you like. You could even try to play around with that background setting if, if you don't like it to be stark white. Maybe you want to try like an off-white or a gray or something, but I think the white is really going to give the effect that you're looking for. So with the opacity set to 50%, now we're done. Now we can just save this file. So in this case, I'm going to do file and I'm going to save as, and we're going to save this as a PNG file. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to call this MC Oda Demo Ghost and save that. And that's it, you've done it. You've created a ghost version of your skin. So now we can just load it up in the game and see how it looks. So now in the Minecraft launcher up here before you go to play the game, there is a section here for skins. This is where you can manage your skin library. So you can see I'm actually currently using a zombie version of my normal skin because it is uh, right here before Halloween. But I wanna go ahead and add this new skin that we made. So under the library, I'm gonna click new skin. I am going to name this uh, demo ghost. Again, this could be a hologram and not a ghost if you choose. I'm gonna use, I, I use the wide player model. And now I just have to select my file. And there is the ghost file that we just saved. 
and there it is. You can see how it looks. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and save that. And I am going to use it. And now let's go ahead and play the game. Okay, and here we are in the game. And you can see by my hand that the new skin is in place. And we're going to go into F5 mode. And there we go. I am now Ghost Oda. <laughs> or Hologram Oda, you decide. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. And, uh, you know, maybe you can give this a try and have some fun. And, uh, and maybe you can go show off your, your elite editing skills to your friends and uh, really impress them with the Ghost or Hologram version of your skin. Well, thank you for watching this tutorial. Again, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you later.